Hi, I'm Gary Kimball with Garage Gurus. Today we've got a tech tip on using refrigerant dye to find leaks in AC systems. So when we're working on AC systems, there's obviously more than one way to find a leak. You may use a sniffer to detect leaks, or you may, after repairing a system, inject nitrogen into it instead of refrigerant and pressure test it to make sure it holds a leak. A lot of people do things different ways, right? I like to inject dye into systems when I work on them or when I'm looking for a leak, right? There's several different dye kits on the market. Some kits are designed to inject the dye while the system's under vacuum. Some you can inject it into the low side of the system while it's running. I personally like to put the dye into the oil on my recovery machine. That way when I inject dye into the system after my evacuation process, it's getting dye put into it right there. So essentially every system I work on gets dye in it. That helps me because later down the road, if there's a problem with that car, it's a lot easier to detect the leak. The dye in the system is fluorescent. So with that, we can use a black light or a UV light and it really enhances and, and makes the color of the dye pop. If you want to take it one step further to really enhance it more, you bring out the amber glasses. And through the amber glasses with the UV light, finding the dye is a whole lot easier. So the dye that we use is actually a fluorescent dye. And the purpose of that, when we put it in the system, when it does leak out, we can take out the black light or a UV light and you shine it on that fluorescent dye, you can see there that it glows, right? We can enhance that a little bit better if we wear our amber glasses and we shine the black light on it. It really jumps out at us under the hood of the car when we find that leak. It makes the leak detection a lot easier. And I, I would use this in a situation a lot of times where I had a customer come to me that was complaining of their AC system not cooling good and I take a look at it, put the gauges on it, and I find out it's low on Freon. I get the sniffer out, I sniff all around the system. I can't sniff a leak. I'm looking for oily residue on any fittings or anything. I can't find any oily residue. I can't find any evidence of a leak. But obviously with the system being low on Freon, we know it's got a leak. It's a slow leak, but it's there. That'd be an instance where I'd go ahead and evacuate that system, inject some oil and dye into it, recharge the system with the proper amount of Freon, Go ahead and send that customer down the road. That way when they come to us next summer or whenever it is, it starts to get low enough that it starts to have performance issues. Then we know we can get that black light out and find that leak. Now let's go to the car and take a look at how that looks on vehicle. All right, so we're here on the car. This particular customer came to us a few months ago with AC performance problems. We took a look at the system. It was a little bit low on Freon. So we got the sniffer out. We did a visual inspection, went over the whole system. We couldn't detect any leaks. So we went ahead and did an evacuate and recharge. While we had the system evacuated, we injected some dye into it. We advised the customer, hey, couldn't find the leak. We got to recharge back up and working. Obviously it's got a slow leak. So when it starts acting up again, be sure and come back and see us and that dye will pay off, right? So here it is back. I went ahead and hooked my gauges up to it. Sure enough, it's a little low on Freon once again. So. At this point, we want to evaluate the system again, right? Start looking around, see what we can find. So since we already injected dye, we know we can go straight to the black light, right? A couple of things I want to warn you about we didn't talk about before. Oil leaks sometimes will show up bright underneath the black light. Some oils have UV, have, have additives in them that really give it that UV shine. Power steering fluid can do the same thing. So if you've got a leak somewhere, say like a valve cover gasket leaking a little bit, it's dripping down on top of the AC compressor, that could be misinterpreted if you just look at the AC compressor and see that shine there. So always look up above, look for an oil leak, you know, make sure there's not other problems. So back to what we've got going on here, one of the first places I like to look on all cars is the Schrader valve, the service valves, right? They have a strong tendency to leak. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove the hose back off of this service valve. I typically will look at them prior to hooking up my hoses, but I've already got them hooked up, so let's just do it backwards, right? Go ahead and get my black light. I'm going to shine it down in there, and look at that. Sure enough, there is some glow around that Schrader valve. So it looks from here like the Schrader valve is leaking a little bit. But keep in mind, I already had my hose on it. And if I use this service hose to inject dye into a system, or to recover a system that had dye in it, whenever I hooked the hose into it, I could have got some contamination there from the hose. If we check the cap, the cap hadn't been, quote, contaminated, right? It was only on the Schrader valve. So let's grab our caps, shine our black light on those, and sure enough, we can see there's black dye, or excuse me, there's UV dye 
inside that cap. So now I know for sure I do have a leak at the service valve. But I want to make sure there's no other leaks, right? We want to, we want to check the entire system. So at this point, we do a do more visual inspection, check the entire system out. And I notice there's a little bit of damage down in the bottom condenser. Now we've got the grill removed from this car already so we can see down in there better. But with that, I can take my UV light once again, shine it down where that damage is on that condenser. And sure enough, we can see our UV glowing down there in a black light. So now I know this vehicle needs and a condenser, of course, with that, I would do a receiver dryer, needs new service valves. I wouldn't do just one. I'd replace both of them. At that point, I can feel confident when I recharge the system and give it back to the customer that their problems are resolved. If you like the content we shared with you here today, make sure and smash that subscribe button and the like button and check us out on garagegurus.tech. Thanks again.